Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Chantal and today I thought we could try a Draw This In Your Style. There's quite a lot of Draw This In Your Styles on Instagram at the moment, but this one here really stood out to me. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I want to see what it looks like in my own art style. I've taken part in over 15 art challenges in just two years and that is kind of crazy to say, but it's true. There are so many different types of art challenges out there that you can take part in and you have it in you to successfully complete them. There's a lot to learn, whether that's about yourself or your art. There are so many positives and some are rarely talked about, so let's discuss them. What could you gain from taking part in art challenges and why should you do them? There are tons of different types of art challenges out there and they're all based around different aspects of art or themes. Lots are centred around particular dates, think Inktober, Peachtober, Drawtober and that's just October art challenges. These are made for certain months of the year and are generally daily or weekly lasting a month long. They can really bring together the entire art community, whilst others can last anywhere up to an entire year. There are weekly challenges too, like like the 52 weeks of sketchbooking, or daily ones like the Daily Doodle Diary Challenge, which I'm currently taking part in and attempting to draw every single day for an entire year. This one is a little crazy, I know. I wouldn't recommend doing this until you've done multiple art challenges already. There are also short challenges to consider, things like attempting to fill a small sketchbook or X many pages within an amount of time. I did one in two days. There's also challenges that are restrictive, things like creating art using only one colour or one specific medium, or even choosing a medium that you don't like. Draw this in your style challenges where the subject isn't even your own and you're limited in how much you can actually change that character using cheap or expensive art supplies and comparing them, creating in a new environment outside with minimal supplies. There are so many different ways that you can challenge yourself and there's so much to gain from that. Okay, so you've picked a challenge that you want to participate in. You're gonna create some art, that's great. Before you begin, you need to be realistic. Can you achieve this goal? Have you done anything like it before? Is the challenge manageable? You want to push yourself, but let's keep this goal achievable. If consistency is a struggle, start with creating art each day for one week, then move this up to two weeks and eventually three. Gradually stretch the end goal. A lot of people who don't create art regularly try a month-long art challenge in the hope of changing that, and that's just too big of a change. It's difficult to achieve and often the challenge doesn't get completed. Don't get me wrong, it is doable, but you're making it so much harder for yourself. There's a lot you can gain from art challenges, but if you attempt a goal that is completely out of your comfort zone and you don't have the time or resources to complete it, you might end up feeling like you failed, when in reality, you never had a fighting chance. What one person can reasonably complete could be completely different for somebody else. I worked hard and was able to complete multiple month-long art challenges, but I created those pieces fast, each painting took between one and two hours, nowhere near the amount of time that some of my original paintings take. And also, because my small business is relatively new, I didn't have any commissions to work on at that time, so I was able to dedicate it into completing the challenge. Plus, I was also filming for YouTube alongside. Everybody's situation is different and you don't know how much time everyone has available to dedicate to these challenges. So remember that when you see other artists on Instagram. You don't know other artists' situation. And don't forget, art challenges are still art challenges no matter how long they go on for. You could challenge yourself in a different way. Focus more on pushing your art style, colour combos, creating quickly. Some challenges last only a day or two, and you've still pushed yourself and completed that art challenge. Week or month long challenges will be completely unattainable for those who were, I mean, simply put, busy. That being said, you could lower your expectations and focus on sketches, quick doodles or studies. This way, you're taking part in the challenge and have something to post on Instagram or stories each day so you can join in, but each piece is only taking 10 minutes. This can be a really good approach if you're feeling a bit burnt out and lacking inspiration. 
you can use the prompt, grab a pencil or whatever medium you're feeling at that moment, and draw the first thing that comes to mind. You can use this as a space to explore without the pressure of creating a finished piece. This is one of the best parts of having a messy sketchbook. I'd love to explore this topic in future because messy sketchbooks are incredible and I think everyone should have one. Although to be fair, my doodle diary is just as good right now. It's about having a place without expectations. Using pretty cheap paper and art supplies that are not expensive in the slightest. I've actually talked about this before on my channel and I'll leave that video down below if you're interested. Doing quick and simple pieces also reduces a great deal of pressure that an art challenge can apply. There are so many reasons that using expensive art supplies can hold you back. And if you're feeling art blocked, having the space and freedom to create without anything holding you back is super helpful. There's so much that you can learn from yourself by experimenting, especially if you don't have a clear art style or haven't been creating long enough to know what you really like. Something that I like to consider in each of my art challenges is what the main medium is going to be. For Inktober, I used India ink, obviously, and I probably would again, it just makes sense. I specifically bought India ink for this challenge and had never used it before. I opened it up and played around for about an hour and that was it. I committed to a month long art challenge, my first at this point, using a medium I'd never used before. And honestly, it could have gone horrifically. Some of them did. They were all on my channel and some actually went really well but this was a risky move. The best way to get to know a medium is to use it non-stop for a set period of time, even if that is simply using it for an entire day until you're comfortable. You're not going to know what you like or dislike about the medium or really know it well at all if you've only used it for half an hour to create one piece of art if you weren't really feeling it and then gave up altogether. Like, it's a brand new medium, you don't have experience with it, you don't know the best practices for your art style. Of course it's not going to go great, it might go decent, but it's unlikely that you're going to create an incredible piece with something that you don't know. You have to really get to know a medium before making that kind of decision and writing it off. I mean, don't get me wrong. I didn't give soft pastels much of a chance. That's a very particular type of medium, and I actually picked up some new ones again recently and gave them another try because I won a giveaway, which was pretty cool. And honestly, it wasn't as bad as I remember. I created again, and it went decent. The video will be coming out next Sunday, or maybe it's the Sunday after. And whilst I have given them another try, I only did so for a couple of hours. If I, for whatever reason, wanted to try a week or month long art challenge using only soft pastels, I might end up finding out that I actually like them, it pains me to say, to put that out into the universe. It's unlikely, obviously, but I've still not given them a real try, created lots of pieces like I would for an art challenge. Much of Robots was mostly gouache, mermaid, watercolour, and Peachtober was coloured inks and neo colours. So prioritising a main medium is really helpful to provide direction. You've already got a vague idea in mind because you know the medium to incorporate. Then by the time you've used that medium for, say, a week non-stop, you will have learnt more about it, how you like to use it and what you don't like doing. Saying that, make sure you experiment. In a lot of ways, art challenges have less pressure. You aren't creating a commission for somebody else, and it's probably not an original on your best, most expensive paper. It's probably not going to be bigger than A4, unless the challenge is something like creating a painting using a month's worth of prompts, which I have actually done before. Art challenges give you the freedom to create whatever you like. You can push the boundaries of your art style, your color themes, when you're taking part in an art challenge, the aim is generally not to create an amazing original for a portfolio. You can use a sketchbook and create with any medium, any colour, subject, style, in any way that you like. This is separate from other work. You can do what you like, and you will learn a lot about yourself. So explore, go with the flow, and create whatever comes to mind. Being open to the art you create is a fantastic way to develop your own art style. 
Even if you feel as though you have a clear style, you may find different ways of creating in the form of adding a separate medium, harsher line work or edges. You could find that you prefer creating in less layers for a looser look or develop a completely separate art style. A lot of my Peachtober pieces were created using Neocolor pastels in a fun, simple style with surrealism, animals, landscapes, the complete opposite of my watercolor paintings that are either a flowy, loose style or they're detailed with lots of layers and smooth blends. Completely different styles, and that's okay, I love them both. And this means when it comes to my daily doodles, I can create whatever I fancy. It means that sketchbooks have variety, they're full of different mediums and subjects and ultimately they're fun and different. If you don't try, you won't know what you might discover by just giving yourself the space and time to experiment. One major positive that I rarely see anyone talk about, art challenges are a fantastic way to grow your portfolio. You can hold yourself accountable and create lots of pieces in a short amount of time. This can be amazing if you're a small business, you can create tons of art for prints and stickers, especially if you create simpler, faster pieces because of the time constraint. These often look amazing on stickers because sometimes the details get lost in something so small. Even if your aim is to just create art and have fun, there will be pieces you like. And even if it's not your intent, you can easily grow your portfolio for a website or social media platform. There will be pieces that you could show potential employers or clients. And depending on how many pieces of art you create, there could be a lot of good art there. There might not be one standout incredible piece of art, but for a month long challenge, you can easily create 10 pieces that you end up loving and another 10 that you like that could be used to bump up your portfolio. And then you've easily got 20 pieces of art that you're happy with. Whilst these pieces may not be to the best of your abilities, what an art challenge portfolio really shows is variety and potential. If the challenge is shorter and you spend more time on each piece, the chances are that you'll love a higher percentage. That being said, some of my favourite pieces from the art challenges I've taken part in are also my fastest. This has happened at least twice in every single art challenge and you'll be surprised how quickly you'll be able to create amazing art. Art challenges can be a great way to hold yourself accountable. If you're the kind of person that finds it difficult to create consistently or have a schedule, this might just be the best way for you. As I said earlier, if you're wanting to take part in a time-related challenge or end up joining well-known monthly challenges, I recommend starting with a simple challenge. Stick to pencil or pens, something that will be nearby and easy to grab for quick drawings or doodles. Set a time frame, how often for how long. It can also help to restrict yourself in the amount of time you're creating for. When I drew a face every day for one month, I restricted myself to only using one pen or one pencil and set a timer for 40 minutes each day. Some days naturally ended up a lot faster, whether they went well or not. It's a good routine to get into. Posting on social media comes with its positives and negatives. On one hand, it can bring extra pressure and stress that might not be good for your mental health. But on the other hand, posting about what you're doing can really help you hold yourself accountable. Or maybe it's the feeling of letting yourself and other people down if you say you're going to try and achieve something and then don't. I think this is probably the way that posting helps encourage me, to be honest. If you are going to upload it online, you could do it once it's already over. Or for a set art challenge, you could start early. A lot of the October art challenge prompt lists come out on the 1st of September, so you can expect most to give you at least a week before it begins. Start early. Plan. Everyone that posts online does it. Hey, I started and finished Peachtober in September. I started mid-September and finished it a few days before the end. I think the video is titled 15 days, but it was actually closer to 13. That's a slightly psychotic way to do it, granted, but it meant I could spend October editing and posting content whilst also interacting with the art community, which I kind of missed out on the year before. 
However you choose to participate in an art challenge, make sure you have realistic plans and expectations. I know you can do it. 2024 is the year for achieving our goals, so let's do it. I would love to thank you for listening to me ramble on. I hope you may have found this somewhat helpful and are possibly considering an art challenge. They're not as scary as they sound, I promise. Plus, there's a lot to choose from nowadays. If you have found this video helpful, please can you give it a like to let the YouTube gods know. Have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you back here on Thursday for a new video. Bye!